Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. This is episode number 35, and today we are going to be taking on two different gym leaders and following up on the Sukun storyline here, so let's jump right into it. I left this trainer battle in here just because, well, two reasons. I found it cool that they have all of the Kanto starters, which is always fun to see, and then on top of that, like I said, the Sukun incident that continues that plot thread happens directly following this and i do believe not next episode but the episode after that we will be going and attempting to catch sukun so that is coming up here in the near future but there we go we took out bulbasaur now it's time for charmander i like charmander myself and at this point i was just trying to train shadow that's why we we've got him out here um like I said in the last episode, I haven't spending a good amount of time just going around Kanto and battling all the gym leaders or all of the the trainers out in the wild before taking on the gym leaders. So that way we stand a much better chance when it actually comes time to taking care of the gym leaders. But that's why we're sort of bopping around and why the last episode was more of a training episode than like a story episode. But good news for this week, we'll be taking down four gyms this week, which is a lot of gyms for one week. Um, Probably the most we've ever put out there, but yeah, this episode I was expecting to only get one gym in. I thought I was gonna lose at one point in one of our gym battles, but we ended up getting a W there, and then I was like, hey, while I'm at it, might as well take on the next gym battle, and then that just conveniently fit in the time slot, and of course there's people outside screaming. It wouldn't be an average Joe episode without something crazy going on in the background. We got loud cars and people screaming, so always a ton of fun. But there we go, there we can see Sukun out here. And it starts running. And then the guy, as usual, who's hunting Sukun down is gonna say, oh, I discovered where Sukun is attempting to go. I'm going to give you a hint and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's really all we get out of it. Someplace north, near water. It's going to be in Cerulean City, I'm pretty dang sure, but like I said, we'll leave that for another day. We don't need to go and do that just yet. It really doesn't have any benefit to us doing that at the moment, so I'll just wait until whatever, because we do have to do a couple things to progress here, but here we are. I believe this is Ecritic City. Um, it's Erica's gym, so the grass type, and uh, yeah, these structures here. This gym is more of a maze than like any other gym we go into. Um, yeah, it's just really annoying navigating through this gym. That's what I would say is all I really could say about it. It's it just, it's a frustrating gym to navigate. Like, I don't think any of the trainers except for Erica herself are really all that challenging. It's just annoying navigating through here. But here we have Tomahawk in the starting position. At this point, I think Tomahawk is probably our strongest team member. I think level 49 is our peak. Um, by the end of this week, all of them are around level 50. So, you know, he has the lead for the moment, but I think our team really starts to develop and even out by the end of not this episode, but the following episode. And uh, we'll see that like it, it quickly makes these gyms progress a little bit faster, hence why the episode coming out on Thursday is a little bit shorter than this episode, and yet we seemingly cover the same amount of ground. Tomahawk's using Fly, and that's another big part of why this episode takes a little bit more time, is when we're just relying on Tomahawk, right, his move is Fly, it's going to take two moves, so technically it doubles every battle that we step into. There we go, Tomahawk's now level 49. And Jupluff, or however you want to say it. I'm going to put out VW Bug. I kind of want to test some of his strengths here. Just to see if he's going to be a good backup. Because I, I have a feeling we're going to need him. Come the time we actually go up against Erica. So this is like a good test to see. You know, does he really have the skill to hold the team over in case shit hits the fan? And judging by what we're seeing right now... It looks like he does, because they won't have any strong moves that are like super effective against VW Bug, to the best of my knowledge. So he's like a really good backup, 
you know, like if we need to revive Pokemon or give out some Hyper Potions or something, we could throw him in there. He could tank a good chunk of that stuff. But he did a good job there, took very minimal damage. I don't even think we need to give him any items. So I think we're good to progress. Like I said, a large part of this right here at the beginning is me just like understanding how this gym works. Because these corridors, even though they look super simple, it's not really clear how you enter and exit them. Which is always a fun trope. You know, when you don't even stand the premise of what's being thrown at you. That's a real good, uh... It's gonna be a real good time when that happens. And of course, now we have Tomahawk and the Shocker, aka Zapper Man out there. Um, yeah, we'll do Signal Beam, why not? I think the Psychic here is gonna be a one hit. That is the good news here, is a lot of the grass type Pokemon overlap with the poison typing. So that makes Tomahawk's job like 10 times easier in these battles. Um, Sludge Bomb, that's probably going to poison us and be pretty effective. Yeah, but it did cause poison. It wasn't like ultra effective or anything, but let's see what Signal Beam does. Hopefully just an okay amount. Yeah, that's about right. And it got confused there, so that's always good. I'll do Fly, but I think Signal Beam is going to be enough to take him out here. And hopefully the confusion makes it so he hits himself on his own confusion. Mmm. Look at that. I actually think that is like the first time that that has happened. Normally the teammate will knock me in confusion, then I'll hit myself about half a dozen times. So it's always nice to get a W that way. That, that brings a smile to my face, ladies and gentlemen. When it works in your favor like that, you take it and you run. But now let's give some items across the board. Not an Ultra Ball. Some items, Average Joe. A full heal would be nice for Zapper Man. And then some Hyper Potions here. At least one for Zapper Man. I don't think anybody else really needs one. We could give one to VW Bug, but it would sort of be a waste at this point to do so, so... I don't really think that's a good use of our items, so I won't do that. And yeah, now it's just me being lost and trying to navigate this gym. I'm sure you're all watching this and thinking, Average Joe, you're a dingus. It doesn't need to be that hard, but it actually kind of is. I think the entrance is right to the left of these two on the left-hand side there. But like, you can't tell that by looking at the area. Like, it's so frustrating that like, I don't know. They make it like overly difficult. Like, I get what they're trying to do because it's like the perspective of the room, but the perspective kind of sucks. Seeing it's not those areas. What we're actually gonna have to do is probably navigate through that middle section there and somehow make something over here work. And then use that on the right hand side or use the left hand side like this or the right hand side like this and then come out from where behind that trainer was. Or take it up farther. Yeah, it's like so confusing to navigate through this section. Like, when the gym, when the outline of the gym is the hard part of the gym, something wrong has happened. And that's what we're seeing in this one. Here, Executor is coming out. I'm gonna bank on Fly here, I think. I don't think Psychic is the right move. Oh, we could use Ominous Wave, too, because it is a Psychic typing. That'll do good damage. It's probably for the better, too. Like, yeah, I would rather use this sort of move versus the ones that are likely going to be effective against a gym leader, so that way we have enough PP left for those moves to use them when we actually go up against a gym leader. So, smart play there, Average Joe. Look at you. Look at you using your noodle. You know what's going on, friend. Okay, let's go this way. Get this trainer to come out so that way we can battle him down here. Now, likely if I just stepped down before stepping over, I could have just used the tree behind this trainer. 
and gone straight to Erica back there, but obviously with the time left on the clock, you probably have a pretty good idea that that's not what I did. Instead, I got lost throughout the gym. Because why wouldn't I, folks? Why wouldn't I do that? You know? There we go. Take Paris out of there. Parasect's coming out. This should be pretty straightforward as well. Just another fly. It is nice right now because Tomahawk outspeeds everything. Like, I have a feeling Erica's Pokemon are going to be a higher level and we're not going to outspeed, so there may be a bit of a struggle with her. But we'll see. I mean, it's just a grass gym type leader. It shouldn't be that bad. Right, it's not like Sabrina. Sabrina is going to be a pain, and that's who we're going to do after this one. Um, yeah, that one should be very interesting. I end up switching there because he fell asleep. VW Bug comes out for Carnivine. And I think Aerial Ace is probably going to do some good work here. BW Bug making an appearance in this gym, man. He's actually been, like, pretty solid. I, regardless of what I say about VW Bug, he has been one of the best... Or I guess she. I guess it's a female. I never noticed. Uh, she has been one of the best team members we've had. Like, since we got her on the team, she's been a valuable part of the team. Like, constantly putting in the work and doing a good job. It's amazing how much she is able to input into the team and how much time it saves us and just it's above and beyond amazing to me how well she performs you know like as a whole I always have a very positive impression of her work on the team it's always above and beyond Here we go, now we need to find our way through this last little bit. Like I said, once again, if the gimmick to get to you as a gym leader is the most difficult part of your gym, perhaps you should look at redesigning your gym. But that's just me. Now we need to cut two plants. Shadow should be able to handle that. Making my way uptown, moving slow. Hoping that I don't die. Okay, here we go. It's time for our gym battle with Erica. So this will be for our second gym badge of Kanto. Which is very out of line for how the Kanto games originally go. I mean, Brock is usually number one with Misty B number two. So this is very, very different. But Okay, Jewel Pluff. This shouldn't be a big deal. We've seen this before. We know how to deal with it. I'm going to use Fly. It uses U-Turn. You fucker. Because now it goes back to Erica. My Fly missed. Or I go up for the Fly now. But I'm going to miss because it wasn't the target. I can almost guarantee it. Yep. And then it puts me to sleep. So fucking perfect start. That's probably the worst way this can go. And you'll see here, I actually, like... I think I just start using Psychic. But I actually realize how bad it is and just start throwing my Pokemon in the battle to die. Because, like, legitimately, it really can't get worse than that. Like, that's such a bullshit start to a Pokemon battle. That, like, it's almost a guaranteed loss if Tomahawk goes down, not even putting down one Pokemon. Like, what else? How could I prevent that? I don't think I can. I think the way to prevent that is just not start with a good Pokemon. Which is a really bad way to start the fight as well. But then I put in VW Bug and I try to go for Aerial Ace. Let's see if we can make this situation better. It uses this move, which is ultra effective. Aerial Ace should be super effective. Let's see how much damage it does. Like nothing. So yeah, it's going to be a problem. That's probably going to knock out VW Bug. 
Yep. And then you can see I, I get frustrated and I just start throwing Pokemon in there. Let's get Zilla Killa. Zilla Killa usually doesn't get a lot of love in these episodes, but let's give him an Earthquake. Giga Drain. That's going to be a one-hit KO. I can almost guarantee it. Just like I said, man, this is like the worst start to a gym battle. I mean, hell, why not throw Shadow in there at this point? What do we have to lose? Okay, I think that's a dark type move looking at it, so I don't think that's going to be really effective against us. Holy shit! That was a critical hit, but holy shit, that's a lot of damage. What the fuck kind of move is that? Might as well go for bite, but we're gonna, yeah. Yep, so you can see this is why I thought it was just gonna be a singular gym episode, because I, I thought, wow, if the grass type gym leader can do this to us, we're in serious trouble. God, whatever this move is, it's good. Like, look at that. Luckily, this time around, we got Paralysis. I think that's going to help us a lot. We use Discharge here. It was a critical hit. That probably saved us the entirety of the gym. Because now it's going to send out Victory Bell. I think I'm going to stay in, but I think now is the time to heal people up. Nope, it was down there at the bottom, Average Joe. You need some revives, buddy. We need to revive at least Tomahawk and VW Bug. I think between those two, we can get the job done. It's going to use Leaf Storm. I'm okay with that. It's probably going to hit me unconscious here. It does. But it lowered its special attack, which means Gator should be able to tank one or two hits. Which is the key here. If we can get Gator to just tank a hit or two while we heal everybody up and get them moving, I'm going to feel a lot better. Because at the end of the day, I think all we really need to win this is Tomahawk and VW Bug. Oh my god. That was devastating. But luckily we had a... Uh, yeah... Um, shit. Okay, let's just use the the revive here on VW Bug. And then maybe we could pull one out of our ass here. With those two. One at full health, one at half. It sounds unlikely, but I believe it's actually possible. I think we got it. I think the key here... I should probably go for Psychic more than I am flying right now, but... That's okay, we're only on Pokemon number two. So I, I'm not overly concerned at this moment that it's going to be a loss or anything like that. It, it very well could be. But I'm not like so scared to say like, oh, it definitely is going to be. Now Fly is not going to be a one hit. I almost kind of wish it left it in the yellow though, because now she's definitely going to heal up. Oh, and she didn't. Okay, good good news there. Let's see how much Leaf Storm does. This could actually be a deal breaker here. Not a lot. Perfect. So this Psychic should take it down. And it was super effective. I should have gone with it from the beginning. It likely would have done more damage, but that's fine. Sunlight's strong with this one. Blossom is coming out, which is perfect. We know that this guy cannot take a fly. At least I don't think so. I mean, he knows Solar Beam? Are you kidding me? Look at him. That little thing. No Solar Beam. Hopefully Fly is a one-hit KO, because I don't think I can take another Solar Beam. I just don't think it's going to be possible. It missed there. We'll go with Fly here. Is that a one-hit? Is it a one-hit? Come on, it's not. And it has a berry, oh shit. This could end really badly. I get, okay, I outspeed this time and I'm going with fly. 
That makes me feel better. Synthesis, it's going to get a little bit of health back. It actually got all of it, so Fly isn't going to kill it. Damn it. That's not fun. Because a Solar Beam is going to kill me at this point, and it looks like that's its go-to offensive move. It's going to set up with Sunny Day here. Maybe my Fly will outspeed. I can only hope. Okay, Solar Beam. That's likely going to knock me out. Oh, it didn't. Okay. That is a game changer. So now let's use Fly. Let's take him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. There we go. Melossum is down. There we go. Tomahawk has reached level 50. The sunlight is strong with this one still. And now, yeah, this annoying thing with U-turn on it is going to come out. I'm going to throw out VW Bug because it's easier to just give Tomahawk a super potion than it is to uh, to give him like a, a revive. There we go. She's just talking shit like normal. I just need to go in here, super potion, and give that to Tomahawk. He probably stands the best chance, although I think VW Bug is a close runner-up. We'll see how long VW Bug can live out here. What does U-Turn do to VW Bug? Is it a lot? That was a critical hit, and it's not much. So that makes me feel better. I think I should give a Super Potion to VW Bug as well. Or a Hyper Potion. Yep, just so we could get through this battle we can see if vw bug could do it if vw bug could do it i will be very surprised although she has been really impressive as of lately leech life now that's gonna suck because it's gonna be a constant drain on our health moving forward which is always <sighs> that much fun the noise i just made with my lips it's that much fun but let's see how much work aerial ace actually does right aerial ace actually might be really effective here Maybe Tangela just had oddly good stats. Soda Pop. And it is. Look at that. Now, of course, it is not going to be a two hit with that Leech Seed on us now. But it is good to know that it, it really can't do much either. Right, like it coming after VW Bug right now isn't... It's not really doing much to VW Bug. Okay, we're in the red. Erica's likely going to use a potion or a full restore or something here. But that further... Uh, maybe because of that, it, she won't. Is that it? That's probably going to be it, I think. I think that's going to be the end of Erica right there. I think that was a critical mistake. Not that she could really do anything but prolong the battle at this point, but... There we go. And that's nice because VW Bug will likely get a level out of this too. He does. Look at that. Or she does. Good job, VW Bug. Level 49. And it wants to learn faint. I take a look at it. Um, it. It's not worth learning. In my opinion. I think that's a really low power move. And, uh... Yeah. I mean, it hits during a protect or something like that and is unfazed by it, but still... I think that's a, a pretty low power move move for level 49 on VW Bug. But there we go. One gym down and one to go on this episode. As I promised, there will be two gym battles. So we are going to go directly from here. I'm not going to show how long it took me to get out of this gym because it was embarrassingly long to find my way back through this maze. So I guess with that being said, as always, we're going to have an epic cut here in a second where we will jump directly to our next gym to start taking on the trainers here. So back in, I forget, I maybe this is Fuchsia City, I don't know. But we are going to take on Sabrina. And of course, as always, we are going to take on all the gym leaders we can prior to Sabrina, before taking on Sabrina, just because it's, uh, number one, it's tradition for average Joe to just do that like a dingus. 
And then number two, I like to get as much EXP on the way to the gym leader that I possibly can. So that way the gym leader isn't as bad. Does it really help us? Not really. Sometimes it does, but it, it's very minuscule levels that you're gaining. Maybe one or two, but... Especially in this game with all these late level gyms, I would say... Any level is better than no levels. I would rather take my time and get a level or two before we end up battling Sabrina than going right now. Even though Tomahawk is likely not going to, uh, not going to gain another level here, I think it is for the best. Because I think this might be, I don't know, Tomahawk... In theory, I feel like this should be Tomahawk's gym. But I feel like we could do enough with, like, um, Shadow and Gator that we might not even need to relay on Tomahawk all that much. And the only reason, like, I word it that way is, like, Tomahawk is clearly one of our best candidates here to throw out there. But Tomahawk is the same as Alakazam, which you can bet your bottom dollar Sabrina is going to have on her team again in the sense that, like, uh... Yeah, they're both glass cannons. Like, they're really, really strong Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but... You throw a rock at that plate of glass, and it shatters. And, uh... Yeah, Gator and Shadow, not so much. They're more like moving tanks. So it actually may make more sense here. I'm actually going to switch Gator into the opening position to see how well he could deal with some of these Pokemon before we even get in there. And then worst case, right, like we use all the dark moves on Gator, we still have Tomahawk out there hanging in there, and we'll still have Shadow in the background moving around. Like, there's still so much more we can do with the rest of our team with Gator in that position that, like, it just makes me feel a lot more comfortable playing it safe that way. But here we go. Let's battle this trainer. Let's get them out of the way. We mine as well. We're already here. They already took my order. They took my job. Okay, Mr. Mime is coming out. And let, let's see how effective Crunch is going to be in this gym. I have a feeling it's going to be a two-hit KO. It's a one-hit KO on Mr. Mime. That's good news. Get some EXP there. Okay, execute. I'm actually gonna switch back into Tomahawk. Um, I fly is much better here, but we're still not wasting any PP because fly is not gonna be effective on Alakazam. There'd be no reason to use it. I don't, Sabrina's Alakazam is always scary to me. Like it is such Alakazam is such a damn good Pokemon, and with how high level Sabrina is and how high level that Alakazam is likely to be. It could be a real pain in the balls. Like, something tells me it's not going to go down easy. You know? It doesn't feel like it's going to be an easy battle. That's what I would say. I, I think there's going to be a struggle here. And I think that's actually a fair assessment. I don't know. We just saw how Erica's gym was, and that was not a, a straightforward... Now, granted, I kind of feel like we got screwed at the beginning of that gym fight. That would be my two cents, but it's very possible that that's how that fight was supposed to go. But here we go. We have another trainer. And I think after this trainer, we end up going like a... Maybe there's another side trainer or something like that, but I think it's a pretty clear-cut path to Sabrina from here. So I am going to do my outro stuff just so that way I can actually focus on Sabrina when we fight Sabrina. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff is greatly motivational for myself in continuing to make videos just like this now and in the near future. We are playing this game here, Pokemon Soul Silver, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we will also be playing Halo Combat Evolved on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, this week, Monday, if you did not check out the episode that came out on Monday on this channel, 
343 Guilty Spark. Go and check it out. It is by far my favorite level of Halo Combat Evolved. It is such a fun level to play through. It has so many aspects of first person shooter and horror genre and just so many good things baked into one level through and through. It is spectacular. It is it's a ride. It's all over the place. Some may get emotional from it if you had some character attachments to some of the the grunts that we go through with, but and it's a really, really cool episode. It completely changes what we know about Halo Combat Evolved up until that point in the Let's Play. There's just so many things that show up that you would say, and they're going to make you say, holy shit, when you see them on the first time. So if you're a fan of Halo Combat Evolved, I mean, you probably already know what 343 Guilty Spark is, the mission, but... You know, go show that video some love. It is going to be my favorite episode in the first Halo game there. I can't even remember what my favorite one is in Halo 2. But like I said, those are the two series going on right now. Um, as soon as Super Mario Odyssey comes out, we will be switching to playing Super Mario Odyssey on Monday and Wednesday. We may have Super Mario Land, the old Game Boy game, in between there just as a sort of filler because Halo Combat Evolved is likely going to end a week or two before that game comes out, so that might be a good way to fill some episodes in and still have some content coming out on Mondays and Wednesdays, but that's the plan there. And the plan here is we'll continue playing this until we are done with it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and once we do end up completing it, I think we are going to be jumping into one of the remakes of Gen 3. So, uh... Lots of more Pokemon content coming out. Obviously, we already did a remake of Gen 4. We haven't gone through and done the original version of Gen 4, but we likely will do Emerald at some point in time here on the channel. It's just, uh, when we get the time to do it, we get the time to do it. And, uh, yeah, I have to look at some of the other ones. But with that being said, like I said, if you like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I respond to all comments and greatly appreciate all of it in advance, guys. Let's go take on Sabrina. She starts spewing out the diarrhea of the mouth is what we call it. Average Joe versus Sabrina. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's see what Sabrina's got. She's got an SB on to start it out. I actually was not expecting that. That could be a big deal, actually. I don't know. I know Shadow's defenses are really, really strong, but maybe Espeon is more glass cannony. The psychic type tends to be that way, so this might be a one or two hit KO here. Yep, two hit. Let's see how much psychic does the gator. Gator. Okay, the answer is a shitload. Respectably, honestly. I wasn't really expecting it, but I guess I understand it. Alakazam is coming out next. I say... I don't know why I'm switching. Oh, you know why I'm switching here? I'm switching because... Oh, yeah, this is good strategy, man. So, if Alakazam physically hits me, it's going to get, uh... It's going to get Paralysis here. It's likely to get Paralysis eventually. And Signal Beam is a bug-type move, so it's actually going to be super effective against Alakazam. So this is a good strategy... Even with the Protect there, that ain't doing much for Alakazam. It's going to Skill Swap, but that's still not going to protect it from the Bug-type move. I'm not a Bug-type. Get it with the Signal Beam again. See, this is a really good, like... I would imagine most people, when they would think of this fight, me challenging it, would think, Oh man, it's just going to be Tomahawk here, but I don't even think we pull out Tomahawk in this fight. Like, I think Zapperman does good work. I was really using my brain on this one. I think that's very clear. Let's see how much Psychic does. I mean, this is the first time it's attacked. Okay, fair enough. It did, it did pretty good damage there. Here comes Signal Beam. I mean, hopefully this is a level here for Zapperman. If not, it's well-deserved. Yeah, that was impressive. Shadow leveled up to 49. Good job, Shadow. Mr. Mime is coming out. I ride it with Zapper Man. Why not? Now, it is a high level. 
That's probably gonna take him down. Is that gonna be enough? That's enough. Oh, uh, yeah, I misclicked. Yeah, now we can bring out Tomahawk. So Tomahawk does make an appearance here. That's good. But with that being said here, ladies and gentlemen, obviously we are going to win it here with this ominous wind and probably one or two additional moves. Our moves are going to be super effective. But uh, like I said before, if you like this episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I respond to all comments and I greatly appreciate them in advance as the episode comes out here. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I hope you all had a snazzy start to your week. Like I said, if you haven't checked out that episode on Monday for Halo Combat Evolve, please go check it out. It is an absolute banger of an episode. I hope you enjoyed it if you did see it, and if you didn't see it, please feel free to take the time and go and take a look at that. And uh, yeah, drop a like on that video as well so it gets some love. Until next time, guys, everybody take it easy, and we will see you all here on the next one where we will be taking on, yet again, two more gyms in the Kanto region. So a lot of lore movement, a lot of story progression going on this week, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's all pretty exciting stuff, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all here again on Thursday. Until then, everybody take it easy, have yourselves a nice week, and as always, Sabrina comes out with the full restore, but no, for real. Peace out, Girl Scout. We'll see y'all here on the next one.